Last time on Delightful Travelers, we ate our way around Palermo trying the best street food we could possibly find. In this video, we leave the big city and venture off to one of Italy's most beautiful small coastal cities. I'm Anna, and this is Trevor. In this series, we'll be tackling the south of Italy. Join us in our adventures by hitting subscribe and clicking the like button. A huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Now, let's go explore. I'm on my way now. Well, we're just standing here trying to take all of this in. We are back in the Mediterranean. More specifically, we're in Cefalu in Italy. And this place is absolutely magical. We can't even believe what we're looking at right now. There's only one problem. It happens to be the very end of August, probably the busiest time here in Sicily. And there are, are loads of people. Currently, we are standing on the Porto Pescaro, I think it's called. And there's like this really old wall or walkway that you get a lovely view of the town, but you can see all these people. We're definitely gonna make the most of it though. This is such a beautiful beach town. It came highly recommended of one of the best places to visit in all of Sicily. You can see all these buildings like right along the water. And there's something about the Mediterranean. It's just so remarkable. The color of the water is very unique. And you always know like it's the Mediterranean. It just has that very, very unique color to it. So far on our adventures here in Sicily, we've been hanging out in the capital in Palermo. So that's like a big city. This is such a nice contrast. It is great to be back in a small little town in the Mediterranean. So for those of you that are new to the channel, let us uh, bring you up to speed here. We recently got back out on the road full time. We are full time traveling now, but one of our new goals with the channel is we're looking for places to live while we travel. We realize that we really like slow traveling. So part of our mission is to figure out, can we live in a place like this? So maybe by the end of the video, we'll decide if do you think we could live here in Jeffaloo? We'll see. But let's talk about these Sicilian beaches for a second. For one thing, they're absolutely stunning. The water is crystal clear and there is sand, which as a lot of you guys probably know, a lot of places in the Mediterranean are very like pebbly. This is like full on sand. They're absolutely beautiful, but they are packed with people. And Italians might laugh at us when we say this. It is the end of August. Of course, that's to be expected. But in Canada and the US and say the Caribbean, which is really, really well known for its beaches, it never, ever looks like this, ever. I've never seen it in my life. It's just like people are packed in like sardines on the beach. I'm sure there might be a few beaches here and there where we're from that this might happen, but I think- Not quite like this. <laughs> not quite like this. In fact, I would say most people from North America would just choose not to go to the beach. I mean, this is really tight. We, our rule of thumb when we're at the beach is we want to be able to see the water. <laughs> yeah, if you're way far back, especially at Mondello in, in yeah. Palermo, there were like 10 rows of, of, <laughs> yeah. of, of, I guess, umbrellas. So you, if you were at the very back, you would just see umbrellas and people in front of There was also, you could, you could almost not even walk by the water, like people were right up to the edge. Yeah. Doesn't matter though, because this place is beautiful. Not to harp on the sheer beauty of this place, but on one side, you have these enormous mountains. On the other is an old town with this rock right in the middle of it, and it's set right here on the Mediterranean. Oh my. One thing that I have to say is super great about this little town is that yes, the beach is packed, but you can also find cute little alleyways all to yourselves. It's so adorable. Maybe it's because everyone's at the beach right now. So one of the reasons there is so many people in this town here, Chefalu, is because it's a very popular tourist attraction in the region. However, there's only about 14,000 or a little under 14,000 in the town, the actual population of the town. And I was trying to read up a little bit on the history of the town, but Sicily has honestly been conquered so many times that it gets really, really complicated and I'm definitely not a historian, no. but I think it might have been founded by the Greeks. If you are wondering how you get here from Palermo, we took the train and can I just say how much I have missed European trains since it has been a few years since we were here. Uh, we, we got it basically at Palermo Centrale, came right into the center of Cefalu and it was only six euros per person and we just basically, I think there's so many trains, we just booked it right at the train station. So as you're walking around this place, you just keep running into beautiful structures like the one behind me. Look at this, it's just an overload of architecture in this spot. Also, you might be wondering like, is it safe here? Of course it's safe and are the people friendly? They're very friendly. You can see lots of people waving at the camera and in general, everyone's walking around with smiles mainly because they're in a beautiful location eating yummy Italian food. One of my favorite things in the world is towns like this where you can find these cute little alleyways that kind of lead to nowhere but it's probably just where people live and I always wonder what is it actually like to live in a place like this. Just walking around this place, it's like you're in a dream. It's like you're transported into a fairy tale, huh? Into a medieval fairy tale. Yes. <laughs> 
I know, look at this alley, it's such a typical alley. You can hear like Italian women up there somewhere chatting to each other while they're hanging out their laundry. I love it. I love, oh my. I love seeing people's laundry <laughs> hanging from their balconies. It just feels so Italian. Well, we're on the hunt for a little uh, snack here, but look what's in front of us here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> the cathedral here is one of the must-do things, must-visit things, but it does close in the middle of the afternoon. Be prepared for that. Basically, I think everywhere in Italy, <laughs> mid-afternoon, most stuff closes. I mean, siesta time, I guess, but there's yeah. lots of people that aren't having a siesta. Oh, yeah. Everyone's out. <laughs> Believe it or not, we've been in Italy for oh, a week now and haven't had gelato gelati yet. Uh, but today is the day. It's hot. Uh oh, it's melting really, really, really fast. I got a cherry flavor. Mm. It looks good. Mm. It's so good. So refreshing. It's very, very vanilla-y, and I think there's just a tiny little hint of cherry sauce in there as well. I went for the uh, stracciatella, but it is so hot, out, guys. It's like 30 degrees. Mm. And this is melting by the second. This is so good. A little chocolate chunks in that. Gelato is perfect cooling us down we have to kill some more time before we uh, check out this cathedral here but mm, oh i could just eat this stuff every single day it's so good it's even better when you're in italy so we're just making our way into the cathedral now and oh my is this place beautiful it is so grand it is so bright in here you can see all these beautiful pillars and all of the windows as well and not only that, there are these paintings that are on the ceiling. What an absolutely immaculate space. So the Cefalu Cathedral was started in 1131 and is in the style of Norman architecture. So there are different kind of tickets you can get here. Uh, you can just do what we did and it's free to go in the cathedral, which is nice. It is nice, but it was a little confusing because we went and waited quite a while for tickets, <laughs> yeah. uh, for people to buy their tickets. And then we went up and we asked for tickets and she said, no, no, it's free to go in, but didn't really tell us what cost money. So we went in and explored, but we noticed there were some areas that were cordoned <laughs> off. So if you want to see, go up and up into the uh, yeah, bell you, tower. You can go to the bell tower. I think there's a really beautiful garden. There is, yeah. So there's a garden as well. There might even be a few more things. They only spoke to us in Italian and just said it's free <laughs> to go in. But that's all we have time for today anyway. But we highly recommend checking it out. You're not going to miss this place when you're in the town. It's smack dab in the middle of of the town and you can see that big rock in the background and we should probably talk about that rock a little bit. So wherever you go in Chefalu you are going to see this giant rock, huge mountain type thing behind you basically everywhere in the town and yes you can actually climb up it. That was our plan for today but it is really really hot. The sun is out right now but it did rain a little bit earlier so we're slightly concerned a that it'll be too hot and two it might be a little bit slippery from the rain to go up but on top there is a castle. I think that's really high up and maybe halfway or so there's something called the Temple of Diana which is what we wanted to visit. It either dates back to the 9th or the 4th or 5th century BC. I'm not sure why, why there seems to be a debate on that when I read about it online because it's it's quite a big difference, but it is a pagan temple that I think is dedicated to the water goddess Diana. We thought we'd show you guys uh, where we're staying, huh? It's literally just steps <laughs> from the cathedral. I don't know if you can see that behind us, but it's right there. Yeah, so you kind of come in and it gets dark <laughs> real fast in the middle of the day. Look at this. <laughs> All right, so welcome to our home here in Chafalu. We're going to show you around this place. Spoiler, it's really, really old. I would love to know how old this actually is. It feels super authentic, but when you walk in, you're right in our kitchen. It's actually, we're only here for a couple nights, but it's really, really well stocked if you were staying for a longer stay. And then the bathroom is over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bathroom is uh, nice as well. Look at the, I'm gonna show them the beams, this kind of beams up the there. The beams are everywhere in this place. Of course, you have your toilet, you have your bidet, because we are in Italy, <laughs> sinks here, and then there's a little wee shower. Yeah, let's show them the little tiny shower. <laughs> shower. <laughs> I mean, everything's smaller over here, it makes sense. Yeah, nice shower head though. <laughs> I'll take you guys to the living room. The fridge is on the way <laughs> to the living room now. Here I am, I'm just walking in it. It's very small, it's a little bit dark. It's the middle of the day and we have a lamp on, but it does the trick. Have a table back there, that's where I kind of have the office set up. 
We have our luggage on the floor. This place is so big. We're trying to keep our luggage together so we don't lose things. Yeah, you were just talking about the setup too. We, there also, this place has really good Wi-Fi, which I wasn't sure. I mean, you're in the middle of this old town, old city. You never know how the Wi-Fi is going to be, but it's actually really good. You might be wondering where the bedrooms are. Well, they're actually up this way. It, and notice how steep these stairs are. So if you don't have good mobility, <laughs> this is probably not the place for you. So Anna's coming up these steep stairs and then there's this kind of like empty room but we did just realize there's a bed. There's a bed there, yeah. They had messaged us beforehand just to make sure there were just two of us and we only need one bed. But I think if you have a kid with you, they could pull the bed out and have it all set up here. Yeah, which is cool. And then our room is kind of up even higher up yeah, these another, stairs. Yeah, well, these, these stairs actually aren't so bad. <laughs> wow. Look at this place. And here is the upper bedroom. This is where the double bed is. There is also an air conditioner in here and they kind of have it nicely set so that it'll uh, AC the downwards or the downstairs bedroom and then this bedroom as well. I also just realized we didn't make the bed today. I know, look at this. So there's also a fan, but I just wanted to show you guys. It's like bolted into to like the, the wall or the cement. Yeah, this is super cool. Again, we have these like amazing beams. I think there's actually a skylight up there too, but they have it covered up. All right, so are you wondering how much does something like this cost? Right in the center. We are like 30, maybe even 20 seconds from that big cathedral. Yeah, really, really great location. I don't think you can really go wrong. Like, it's a pretty no. small town, but it's an amazing location. It actually was less than 100 euros a night. I think it was about 115 to 120 Canadian. We, yep. always, we actually try to stay under 100 Canadian a night for us, but Italy in August is <laughs> just not possible. Yeah, it's not possible in August. I mean, most times we actually try to stay to around 50 or 60. Uh, so this is a bit of a splurge for us, but we had to come to this little town when we heard about it. So it's a little while later and it's also aperitivo time which happens to be our favorite time here in Italy. It's a, I don't know about six o'clock or something like that. I recently discovered well, you guys know that we like Aperol spritz, but I recently discovered that here in Italy, you can get so many more different types of spritzes. So I'm going for a limoncello spritz today. Hmm. So, uh, they're very super refreshing. While she's trying that, I'm going to have to point out how much quieter is today, Sunday, versus yesterday, Saturday. Yeah, so we actually arrived in Chepelou yesterday on Saturday. This time yesterday was just packed with people. Clearly people come for the weekend and then leave on Sunday evenings because look, there's just like way fewer people. So the waiter convinced me to try an artisanal beer, which is craft beer. You guys know we love our craft beer, so I'll try it out quickly. It is an Italian craft beer. It's really good. Oh, very different than the domestic beer I've been trying. It's gonna do the trick, but while we're having our uh, drinks here, we were talking about like big cities versus small towns like this and like what do we prefer? Oh, there's such pros and cons, isn't there? I'm curious what you guys think, but one thing about small towns we find is we always like fall in love with them a little faster. However, if you're in a small town for a while, you get less food options for us. It's all about the food here in Italy. So in this town, it's actually mostly Italian food. Surprise, surprise, I get it. But we're from Canada and we're used to a lot of options. So just be prepared if you're coming here. It's pretty much all Italian food and fish. It's hard to find vegetarian options. So for all you veggies out there, just keep that in mind. But we do love the big cities. We just came from Palermo that had so many options for food. And of course, it was just a big city. Oh, this is gonna be tough. As we make our way through Italy, we're gonna be kind of going in and out of big cities and into town. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm curious at the end of our Italian adventure here, what we're actually going to prefer. One of the other things we keep discussing as we're walking around this cute little town is what it reminds us of. And we always do that wherever we go. Of course, it has a very, very Italian feel to it. You can't miss the fact that you are obviously in Italy and in Sicily. But we've been in so many different Mediterranean places that we definitely notice like similarities in certain places. It reminds us a little bit of Havar in Croatia. And we're also talking about the fact that it kind of reminds us of Panya in Crete. And that's probably because they're both um, town cities that are in the very, very south of their countries. They're very close to Africa and you can kind of feel that influence and kind of see it in the architecture as well. Well, what a way to end the night. Check out this sunset. We have like a cotton candy sunset going on and it's not even a sunny day. It's all clouds. We're down on these rocks and it's out of this world. Yeah, sometimes the cloudier it is, 
And as long as it's not too cloudy, mm -hmm. the better the sunset because it just creates this like cotton candy yeah. effect. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm probably you're gonna see me glancing away a lot because wow, <laughs> it's amazing. The sun's just like <laughs> on the it's, other go, side. it's going down <laughs> behind us while we're sitting in front of it, so you get the light. So yeah. here is the question of the day. We mentioned that uh, we're starting to travel to figure out mm -hmm. can we live in certain places, and here's the thing: can, could we live here? Um, so when we say live somewhere, we're not talking about like a permanent move because yep. we don't really want to live permanently anywhere. But for us, slow travel, I think, is going to become a big thing. So spending a month or two or five months or eight months in yeah. one place. Which means like some of you might, for. they might comment right now and say like, well, how can you? We're Canadians. How can you go to Europe and like stay past your 90, 90 day limit? I think 90 days. You can apply for extensions. So yeah. if we really loved a place, we would. But j let's just focus put that on. Aside. Yeah, put that aside for a second <laughs> because there's ways to do that. Yeah. Let's focus on, could we actually live here? Like spend, let's say, more than a month here. Uh, I think so. I think the answer... I think it would not be in July or August. 100% not July or August. Yeah. <laughs> because I think mm -hmm. that locals that live here that are not part of the tourism industry um, probably can't wait to n have their town back when yeah. the tourism industry is over. But however, all the restaurants want the, the tourism, right? So it yeah. makes sense. It's such a But cute imagine place. in yeah, September or October and then getting into the winter time if you don't mind it being a little bit cooler and not so beachy. Yeah. It would probably be amazing here. <laughs> uh, but we did uh, talk a little bit about how we like to be in bigger places for just a little more access to different types of foods. Yeah. Here it seems like it's all Italian food. Italian food is probably one of the best foods in the world, but we can't eat it every single <laughs> night. Yeah, so for us, the cuisine, cuisine is not perfect, but we do love this charming little town. Now, if you got this far in the video and you're still wondering who we are, mm -hmm. it's Trevor and Anna, Delightful Travelers. You probably like the video if you got this far. Hit the thumbs up button. That helps us out. Leave us a comment, click the share button, and an extra thank you to all of our channel members on YouTube and our Patreon because you guys are the ones that keep us on the road. Yeah, and if you are interested in becoming a member, there's a little join button right below the video, and then mm -hmm. we always have a link to Patreon. We do. In the description. So for now, we're going to keep watching that sunset. Yeah, it's crazy. And call it a night in this beautiful little town in Sicily. Yeah, and there's lots more content from Italy coming up. Next, we're going to be in Catania, but I think we're going to mm. be in a whole bunch of other places here in oh, Italy. Another city coming up, guys. Get ready for that. All right, guys, that's it. From Chefalu, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.